It's summer. Well, at least summer is right around the corner. And I don't know about you, but I have such fond memories of my summer days as a child. You know, as a Gen Xer, what I remember of summer is getting up every day on my own time, going to do whatever I wanted because I chose it, staying up late at night because I chose it. <laughs> Going back to bed and repeating. Nobody was telling us what to do. Our parents were at work, right? Nobody was there necessarily to give us their, you know, structured inventory of what our days needed to be. I want to talk about this concept today. I want to talk about this concept of having your time be yours. Because I think that we are way too indebted in our time, in our culture, and because we are so indebted and so leveraged, it's running us down. It's one of the biggest sources of our stress, actually. And so let's get at it. Let's talk about why it is that not being able to decide when you want to wake up, where you want to go, what you want to do with the flexibility that we once did in our childhood, certainly not in our summer days, right? Like, because we aren't living that kind of life, we are living a leveraged, indebted life that is starting to kill us. And I want to help give you all the tools that you need to get out of that. You're listening to Straight from the Psychologist's Mouth a podcast that teaches women in midlife to unapologetically stop silencing their dreams and start designing the lives they want to live in. I'm your host, Dr. Natalie, and as a clinical psychologist of the last two decades and a twice-divorced single mother myself, I not only know how hard it can feel heading into midlife, I am living it right here with you. I have taken all the many failed attempts and lessons learned in my own life and combine it with my extensive clinical experience to give you the tools you need to make midlife the best time in your life. No joke. So let's get started. Welcome back. Okay, so the summer months are here. I am so excited. And it has spurred a bunch of stuff up for me. That and the fact that I've been really plotting through one of my most difficult stories that I share with you guys. In the last month, I've talked a lot about, you know, getting through my second divorce, but not just my second divorce, getting through last year when I made some major significant changes to how I was doing my private practice. I added to my coaching business, learn to love your story.com. And I graduated my first born out of high school, which is one of those major transitions that we go through as women in midlife and any of those major transitions. Remember, those are those liminal spaces and we blow those wide open and you start to see like your life can't just keep going in the same way that it's been going with the same skill sets that you have that you're going to have to course adjust. And the lesson learned that I had in this last year was really around this idea of feeling indebted but indebted in my time. I was doing well finally in my business but what I realized is I wasn't happy and I was feeling stuck, but I was feeling stuck in that old hustle. Listen, I'm going to link in the notes um, to one, a blog where I wrote a little bit about this revelation as it was happening last year. But I also just did a podcast not too long ago, just a handful of months ago, where we talked about this idea of the hu killing hustle culture because hus hustle culture is going to kill us otherwise. And both of those concepts are kind of what's at play in talking about living a debt free life. And a debt free life. Man, it has one step, get back up, <laughs> get back up. That is how you solve this problem. But first we, we have to understand what it mean, what I mean here by a debt life, like living in debt, living indebted in your time. You know, I want us to call back those summer days of our, you know, childhood where we really were in control of where our time was placed. 
we were the ones that got to decide when we wanted to go someplace to go there, who we wanted to be with, when we were getting up, when we were going to bed. There may have been some structure around that, but man, summer months, one of the things that we looked forward to most was just being able to direct our time all by ourselves. Nobody else was telling us where we had to be, what we had to be doing, when we had to be doing it. That's a big deal. And most of our adult life in our culture, in Western culture, is structured in such a way that we don't decide where we want to be when we want to be there. We are there because we have to be there. We've got to pay the bills. We've got to do what our you know boss has asked us to do on this project. We have to pick up the kid. We have to make sure dinner is on the table. There are so many competing interests for our time that it's easy, easy to get to the end of the day and realize, boom, man, almost none of my time is spent in a way that I wanted to spend it, right? All right. So why is it that we feel so indebted in our time? Why is it that the the culture has set it up in such a way? So last year, while I was going through everything, you know, getting my son ready for his graduation, having this revelation, like, I think I'm working too much. I think I need to restructure things here, do a little less face-to-face time with people. I really want to teach. I really want to get my, you know, ideas out on paper in my blog or in a book or on a podcast. Um, and I started to structure life so that by January, I, I could have a very different work life look. It was really driven by this concept of I'm, I, I feel like I'm just doing the things that I have to do because I have to do them. And I regret missing out on time with my son. Clearly, obviously, when your kids graduate, that's kind of one of those natural grieving places where our brain goes. But what it revealed for me during that time was, oh, dang, like, I wish I would have been able to take off time and spend with him you know, camping more in the summer or just spend time with him more. Instead, I was dropping him off at summer camp programs for the whole day long, right? So even in his summer months, I wasn't letting him have that time to really check in and and direct traffic for himself. So I have a regret about that, but I also have a regret I didn't get to spend time with him. He's now like this uh, you know, adult. And uh, his life is going to be in large part directed now by where he wants to be and what he wants to be doing, not not by me. And I missed out on that opportunity. And that regret really got me thinking like, why did I do that? Why well, did that? Because I had to pay the bills. Well, why did I have to work the way I did? You know, I just kept asking those questions of myself, kind of digging into it. And I recognized my own indebtedness to this societal or cultural concept that you have to be at work eight hours a day. You have to be at work, you know, and work looks like this kind of a thing and and work is separate from your home life and all of those things. And I didn't like it. I don't like it one bit. I was like, this is never going to work for me. I'm a single parent. So when my kid is home, if I have extra work things to get done and I need to get to sleep at you know, such and such a time, the math is they lose out because I'm going to have to do those work things. And by that time, they're going to have to go to bed. I'm going to have to go to bed. It's not going to work. I don't want that for my life anymore. So how do I start to look at this differently? How do I start to reorganize this for myself? And that's what I started to do. Strategically, I started to Um, make the decisions that we're going to open up having more flexibility in my time, even such that, you know, if my daughter got home from school, that I would be available to her and I could go, you know, back and do some tasks later if, if need be. But for the most part, I could be done by the time she was there. That was going to, that was going to be some reckoning, my friends. Like that was going to be an overhaul in how I had been operating up until that point. And it was an overhaul in how I had been operating up until that point. But I knew that that was what was going to be right for me, that having that flexibility and having more time, less money coming in, by the way, because you're right. Like I was going to have to make those decisions. But to me, the debt was really less about the finances than it was about lacking the time. So just prior to recording that, I did a little experiment on myself and I encourage you to do the same, which is for a week, I did kind of a look back. I took a a tally of what time I was spending and I really was like noting it as the day went. And then I went back at the end of the week. And what I realized is about, you know, a third of my day is spent 
work. A third of my day is spent sleeping. That's right. Cause I do get my eight to nine hours every single night because it is that important to my self-care for me to sleep. It's that important, important to yours as well, but I will, I'll, I'll leave that topic for another day. And then everything else had to happen in that third. And so even though um, a year later and a, and a lot of finagling later, I have more time. I can see why I feel busy. I can see why I feel like I don't have enough time for the things that I want, like friends and family and taking time off to be with my kids. I don't have it available if I'm still giving a third of my life over to my work. So there is still work yet to be done. There are still things for me to to get into here. But I want you to think about how inextricably connected your stress levels are to how much time you spend doing something because you have to do it versus doing something because you want to do it. Now, one of the ways that you can shift this idea of work being so stressful is if you you are stressed at work, you will be more stressed with your time indebtedness. But if your work is something that you really enjoy doing, that does go down some. So the time, eight hours, eight hours might be the same um, or whatever amount of hours that you're putting towards it. But the stress level might go down some if it's something that you want to do. So there is more than one way to look at this. But I want you to do, I, enc- I strongly encourage you to do this time analysis. Go back through your week for one week, just one week, maybe two, if you're like super uh, overzealous about figuring this out. But ch- take a look at where your time is spent and then start asking yourself these questions like, why am I there this much? This it, 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 What? Like, <laughs> why am I spending this much time doing that? Is there someplace else I want to be spending my time? If there's someplace else I want to be spending my time, what's getting in the way? Why am I not able to shift that? And if you ever run up against this, you know, like, because it just has to be that way, because I have to pay the bills, because I have to do this, I I strongly encourage you to challenge that thinking. You know, start to come join one of my groups. Let's all start sharing together what we're finding in this time analysis, because I would love to be talking to all of you about how is it possible that I am stuck doing what I'm doing and feeling regretful that I don't have time to do what I want to be doing and yet not testing not pushing myself and experimenting with ways for me to push back on the I have to because I have to concept. That's what's going to kill you. Over time, if we don't start challenging ourselves to really take a look at those places and shift things into I am like you did in the summers when you're a kid, I'm doing what I want to do when I want to do it because because it's my life. If you don't get to a place where you feel that you are more in control of where you apply those hours, my friends, you are not living your life. You are living a life assigned for you. And if you're living in a, in a life assigned for you, you might be kind of happy. You might have lucked out and gotten some of those things to align. But for most of us, that is not the case. We just are super duper unhappy if we get stuck in that that place of feeling like we're just doing what's being asked of us instead of what where we want to be. So I'm going to really challenge you in the month of, of June and July. I'm going to be traveling. And so you're going to be listening on the podcast to a lot of different interviews that I've done. Oh, you're going to love these interviews as they come up, you guys. I promise. But I'm going to challenge you to take this, this time to look at where am I spending my time? I'm going to challenge you to join one of my groups, my online groups, so that we can all be talking about where is our time spent and what are we learning about ourselves, where we're spending that time. And is that something that I want to keep doing? Because by the fall, what I really strongly encourage you to do is come on a journey with me in one of my group coaching events. Let's, and I have free ones, so don't worry about the cost. Like this is here for you. These resources are here for you. 
I really would like to encourage you to start and shift just like I did last spring. I want you to take a hard look right now. Let's do some spring cleaning. Let's figure out why you are feeling stuck, why you aren't feeling happy in your life, why in some places, you know, you're spending way more time doing things you'd rather not be doing. And you're starting to notice the regrets in your life stack up and you don't want that for yourself. Let's take some inventory. Assessment is really important. It really helps. It's a key actually to helping us. Um, really figure some of these things out. And as you're doing that, and I'm traveling <laughs> and checking in with you, I want us to be, you know, starting to build some self-awareness of how am I here and what do I really want in my life? I'll be giving you just a little tidbit here and there. Um, again, you have to be following. You have to be in one of my groups online so that you can get this extra fun, goody stuff. But all those links always are in the notes. So as you're listening to this, just remember, once you park that car, you can go to the, the notes and you can link through and be a participant in this. But we're going to be talking about these things. We're going to be talking about ways for you to really address this time sickness and live a debt-free life, you know, use that step of get back up. Because once you know what isn't working for you, then you can be asking yourself, is this serving me? When you catch yourself, is this serving me? If it's not, get back up. Let's keep trying. Let's keep trying to figure out what's the balance for you. And it's not really about balance. Again, it's not about having a life work balance. Uh, it's about having integration between your personal and your, you know, professional lives. It's about making sure that all of it fits together. Maybe, you know, eight hours here and eight hours there balanced isn't really balanced because eight hours in a job that you really love feels like eight hours in a job you love. Eight hours in a job you hate feels like 20 hours of your life every day. And it affects your sleep and it affects the quality of your relationships because you're in a bad mood by the time you get home. I mean, there's all sorts of impacts that start to happen. And I want us to start to, to really investigate that as a group here on my podcast so that by the end of this summer, when you recognize kind of, oh my gosh, as I look back, I am not living life like I did in the summer days of my youth where I got to be where I wanted to be when I wanted to be. And I've bought into the bullshit that tells me that retirement is going to be that somehow. No, it won't. Because if you haven't built in the skills, I promise you, if you have not built in the skills to integrating your life and feeling balanced in your life, it's not going to miraculously show up because you don't go to a job every day. It isn't. You're going to have to start to live this lifestyle, to breathe this lifestyle, to have that questioning curiosity, right? Having, having that posture of, does this, does this serve me? Is this, is this in alignment with what I want? If I'm checking in with my feeling, like we talked about in our last week's podcast, if I'm checking in with my gut, what is my gut telling me? Is this in alignment with where I want to be? Okay. If it's not, then you need skills, my friends, to get back up and start moving forward towards that life of integrated. Yes, I, I, I'm sure retirement, if you have the luxury of getting to something like that, will feel that way at some point in some ways. But the time sickness problem is much more insidious than that. It's built into how we think about our time. Is it our time or is it their time? You know, is it my family's time? Is it my friend's time? Is it my work's time or is it my time? You know, when they ask me to do something and I'm feeling guilty, if I say no, that's not your time. You feel guilty because you think it's theirs. It's not theirs. It's yours. And so what we need to get at is what's happening underneath all of that, that feeds into your belief system that this is not time for you. This is not yours to make decisions around. We got to switch that. And when that starts to switch then yes, you can enjoy a retirement if you're coming up on that at some point in your life. I probably will never retire, but partly because that's just my mentality. I like working. I like doing those things. So I'll be doing something to some you know, degree. But you know, I'm also a single parent. I'm not going to have the kind of retirement built that I would have had I not gone through two divorces. So there's some other like logistical reasons why I need to take a look at this because the underlying skill sets have to be there for me to feel like every day was like a childhood summer day where I wake up and 
it's guided by where I want to be, not where you want me to be for you. And I want that for you as well. So because this has been part of my journey just recently, even, it's going to be something that I offer here for you. So I hope to see you online. I hope to see some of you start to share with us where you feel like those time sicknesses are for you. And you start working towards living a debt-free life as well, because you deserve it. We all do. And that, my friends, is how we're going to work together to learn to love our story. All right, so I'm adding a little addition here. It's the legal stuff. Just so you're aware, nothing in any of these podcasts constitutes actual psychotherapy. Yes, I am a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of Minnesota, but everything here is just educational in nature and is a suggestion of things that you could be doing in your own life to learn how to love the life that you're in instead of waiting for a life that you're dreaming of to come towards you. So just remember, this is not therapy. And if ever you need any resources for mental health, look in my notes and I'll always have a little blurb at the bottom where you can click on a link and get those services for yourself.